It started with a cheap RC car I got on Boxing Day, and in my last video I combined it with a drill to make this little drift machine. And at the end of that video, I came to the conclusion that I modified the car past what the chassis and suspension can handle. Since my last video, I've redesigned all the circuitry, I've designed stuff in CAD, and I've 3D printed all the parts to completely build this from the ground up. This is the Drill Powered RC Car 2.0. Here's some of the modifications I made so far. Soft rubber wheels from a longboard, 20 watt LED headlights, 20 volt drill battery, drill motor and gearbox, 3D printed belt drive, custom independent front suspension, custom chassis, the circuitry to control the current and voltage supply to the motor, and one of my subscribers requested that I would install some ground lighting and a Bluetooth speaker. He also requested a playlist for me to play on it. So, here you go buddy. Thanks for subscribing. I also went straight for gold and I upgraded the power supply from a single 20 volt drill battery to a dual 40 volt drill battery setup. And I'll get to that later in this video. I would like to note that I actually know very little about how RC cars are typically designed and I intentionally avoided researching it for this project so that my design would be as original as possible. I started by deciding to remove the control circuit from what was left of the original RC car. There really wasn't much left at this point and what was left really wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing anymore. So I figured I could optimize the effectiveness from my suspension and steering by printing my designs in a mixture of solid and flexible materials. The parts that hold the wheel in place, for example, will be a rigid material, and the mounting bracket for the steering components will be a flexible material to allow some of the vibrations and bumps in the road to be absorbed. Next, I designed the chassis in three parts to be bolted together. In my first attempt, I printed the rear section that contains a battery dock with a flexible filament to act as an absorber for the rear axle, but I found there was just too much forward roll from the rear axle when accelerating, so I instead went back to the drawing board and integrated the rear axle and the drive motor mount into one assembly and printed it with a solid filament. This worked much better. I separated all the control circuitry into the body of the car, and this effectively separated the control side of the circuit from the output side, which was mounted in the chassis. I also attempted to try and reinvent the wheel. Uh, this really didn't work out well. I wasn't able to gain enough traction even with my softest filament I printed these with. The only success I was able to achieve was with this paddle design, and even then it just made for some really cool slow-mo shots when we drifted around through the water. I ended up borrowing the wheels off my longboard and I found these to be about the best for traction and stability and they were a bit heavier than the other wheels I was using but that was fine. It lowered my center of gravity and it helped for stability when we were drifting around. We took it out for a few test runs. We had some fun but it was kind of hard to control because of the amount of torque that drill motor assembly constantly caused the wheels to break free and eventually we ended up launching off a speed bump and we took some damage. <laughs> That's amazing, oh, so good. We broke a few suspension parts, the cog stripped from the motor, and the threaded rod in the rear axle got pretty bent up. After fabricating some new parts and making some necessary repairs, I decided I needed to find a way to limit the torque applied when the car starts to accelerate. One of the circuits that I used to help optimize the amount of power these batteries have into this car to make it work was a voltage converter with a built-in current regulator. Now, these things will allow me to actually set the amount of voltage and current coming out of it that I can send to the control circuit for the motor, and that way I can optimize it for different conditions. By limiting the current, I can slow down the rate which the motor accelerates the car to its top speed. I now also have the ability to control the amount of voltage supplied to the motor. The amount of voltage is what ultimately determines the maximum speed that this motor will spin at. So now I can vary my torque and the top speed to optimize the performance of the car in different locations. So we went out for another test drive and we played with the tuning for a bit to see what we could make it do. We found that the best performance we were able to get with this 20 volt setup 
was to have just enough torque that the wheels just started to break loose on acceleration. Um, but our voltage had to be cranked to max just so we could get our top speed optimized. But even then, we were really only able to actually hit yeah, a top speed of 24 kilometers an hour. Now, my original plan was to actually end the video here, but I was really hoping to get a more impressive top speed than just 24 kilometers an hour. So I decided to do one last thing, the 20 volt to 40 volt conversion. I jumped back into CAD and I designed a removable battery expansion for my current battery setup. I was also able to optimize the space between the battery dock for a storage compartment for the high current components. The few remaining parts that remain in the body are responsible for receiving signals from the remote control and controlling the car. After a few more adjustments, it's time for the final test drive. This thing is fast. I managed to take it up to 46 kilometers an hour, which makes this thing officially faster than Usain Bolt. Not bad at all for an overclocked drill motor that was never intended to run an RC car. So I might actually be able to make this thing go faster if I could make it go further, but I really don't have the range with this remote. I'm a little conflicted about replacing the controller transmitter and receiver. I, I mean, besides the body, it's the only part that is actually from the original cheap RC car that I started with. So really to upgrade this thing further, I'm going to have to get a new remote. This is a remote that it came with. It's fairly short range. It's only really an on off switch, no variable control, and it really doesn't do much past 100 feet or so. I'm kind of feeling like this is a good metaphor for the existential question of if you replaced parts of your body with robotic parts slowly over time, at what point are you not the same person that you started with? Did you become someone else? And in my opinion, the answer to that question is, is don't view yourself from where you came from. View yourself at, from where you're at and what direction you're working in. And it's always a good idea to try and improve over time. I guess what I'm trying to say is I talked myself into buying the big boy version of this remote and I have it on order and probably when that comes in the mail, I'll make another video at that time. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe. It means a lot. And until next time, stay creative. like this video. Uh, if you want to check out some of my other videos where I use drill batteries to power lots more other stuff, including a quad I made for my kids, uh, as well as the video where I talk about how electricity works, you can also go back and watch the first video in the series where I start with just the base cheap RC car. Lots of stuff there. So again, thanks for showing up and I'll talk to you next time.